Well, Jeremy is the president of the Nigerian Association of Chambers of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture, Deleoye. Good to see you and thanks for your time. Thank we saw you. you in that report and it tells the importance of what we're dealing with at the moment. Sometimes you hear the government say, patronize made in Nigeria, do made in Nigeria, breathe it, feel it and even eat it. So how well or how far have we gone looking at uh, your members talking about uh, the Chamber of Commerce because they are port free of all the uh, smaller sectors that make up the uh, NASIMA. So let's start, give us a sense if we can do this in a minute, uh, what NASIMA covers. Well, NASIMA is the largest business in Nigeria. We currently have 71 city and state chambers of commerce. Lagos Chamber is just one of that 71. Abuja is one, Kano is one. Then we also have at the traditional scene, we have what we call the bilateral and multilateral chambers. That is Nigerian, British, Nigerian, Turkish. We have about 19 of that. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to international trade or foreign direct investment or attracting business, Nasima is your gateway. And we have just seen what we recently did in India and Qatar. So other organizations or private organizations in Nigeria don't have that kind of reach. So if government is truly interested in foreign direct investment, Nasima is the platform. Truly, underscore that. If government is truly, it, it then means that there are some drawbacks. No, I'm not trying to say, because like this government is still new. They're barely nine months. No, no, it's not, well, it's not about uh, this government. We're talking about government no, over the I years. No, I use that word. I'm <laughs> saying it advisedly, that if there is any intention to bring foreign direct investment, we use our local contacts with our membership of over 177 chambers of commerce worldwide to reach out like we did in Qatar. You can see what happened there and how we were able to use our contacts to change what was, would have looked like an embarrassing situation for Nigeria. So this is why it's very important if you are designing any policy on foreign direct investment or how to have an ecosystem where you can actually have a situation where trade and investment can thrive. Now, Simba would, uh, has enough expertise in the house and connections outside Nigeria to support whatever policies government intend to do. So what's the current state of affairs of, uh, in the private sector regarding uh, the exchange rate? We are not happy yet. I don't think Nigeria has no business selling its currency. The countries that have far bigger, better do like Qatar, India, China, UAE, they don't sell their currency the way we sell. They peg it. I know some of my friends will not agree with me, but you have to have a reasonable rate where the productive sector can assess the market. If I'm interested in buying rose rice, I can go and haggle with the other persons. But if I want to buy things for raw materials for production to be competitive, I cannot be in the same market people want to buy rose rice. If you do that, it will be difficult for us to compete. And we are going under the African continental free trade now. You need to create an ecosystem where the Nigerian businesses can compete with their other counterparts in Africa. If not, we will end up being, even though I don't think we will be, because we have uh, the private sector in Nigeria has already delved out. There are many businesses in Nigeria that are actually in Africa already, but they are for share force. We have the secure ID, they are in 21 countries. We have our banks, they are everywhere. The fintech we are dominating, the dangotes they are everywhere. So I'm not afraid about the ability or the innovative capacity of the private sector in Nigeria. Government needs to listen more to us so that we can, what we have done alone, using our government behind us, we can yeah. do more so that we can actually dominate Africa. And I really don't want to save this for last, uh, uh, even though we have other things to talk about. Quickly, what other recommendations do you think uh, you can proffer uh, you know, to the government uh, in terms of how to get it right with uh, the foreign exchange? What we are saying is, what everyone is telling us, the Germans, the Qataris, the Indians are saying, they don't really care about your rate, but stabilize it. So that if I get in today at a rate, if I'm living in five years, I should also expect that I'll be close to the rate which I got in. So it's very important. That is where the sanctity is very important. Like I've mentioned to you, there are some countries in the world because of, they have the necessity what we call the governance, where they trade their currency. You go to a places like the US, even the South Bank is owned by private sector. So you have Britain, you have Euro, you have uh, Australia, you have uh, Japan. So what is our business trying to do, do what they are doing in Europe or in Japan when we don't have the fundamentals? Yeah. 
So it's important as a developing country, you must protect your currency. You can see the very few steps that have been taken now to monitor that market. All the bad guys have left there. And that is why it's falling. And if we can sustain it by providing enough support to that market, and government must intervene, whether you like it or not, that's why it is peg. When it is peg, you know, it's a small intervention. The CBA just directed that the BDCs should sell at the bank. That is pegging. So what are we afraid of? Anybody telling you to sell your currency when you don't have the fundamentals is telling you to commit suicide. You cannot plan. That is the biggest problem. If the rate is not stable, it's very difficult to attract for a direct investment. And speaking of which, uh, uh, the, the customs, uh, some members, uh, your, some of your members were also talking about the rate at which the customs was, was also giving uh, the forex. Uh, but again, and uh, you put that in perspective, plus the ease of doing business, we've always had this cliche. How practicable has that been so far? On the customs issue, incidentally, I sat beside him today, and I told him I had a lot to discuss with him, the CG. Don't tell me you didn't have that conversation with him. No, we had some, but that, to be fair to him, they were private conversions. But I've told him, I've seen that the CBN is giving him rates. So it's very unfair to accuse the customs of being the one manipulating, because the rates are provided by the central bank. So we look at it, if you look at the customs ads, there's a session called Session 24 which allows the customs, I can, if I want to do into a new transaction, I can apply to the customs to say, give me a quotation. And with a given perspective of time, they must comply with that request so that I can plan my business. But in addition to that, if they give me a rate, they can, they can keep it for a year. And what that means is that if they intend to change, they must give me reasonable time. So by the spirit of the customs act, it does not contemplate the customs that changes rates every day or every week or every month. There must be reasonable time because you can have a trade cycle. If I borrow to do business now at 10 million naira is what I require, and 3 million is the projected for the customs, before the goods even leave England, the custom has changed it to 4 or 5 million. How do you want me to clear the goods? This is the frustration our members are having. Government must not be seen to be making money. Custom is a trade facilitation unit. And the customs has no business contemplating or charging or using the FS rate, index rate. You should use the form M rate, which is there, with a percentage of it. And that is what you should use. Government should, if government is saying it believes in Naira, he must also charge in Naira for his services. If the government continue, we don't have a dollar problem, we have a Naira problem. The government should show by its own action that he must conduct his own business in Naira. Why are you saying people should do business in Naira, then you are charging or calculating your customs duty in FX? So this is what we are talking about. As businesses, this kind of thing does not work anywhere in the world. Each time I meet a government official, I ask them one question. This thing you are doing in Nigeria, show me where this policy has worked anywhere. They cannot. So we should not be used for experiment. I'm not saying the government is not trying. They made a whole lot of problems when they came in. But We've gone past the stage of blaming the past. Yeah. You have been there for some time, you campaigned, you won the election based on these facts. So it is important now that you immediately start moving. Give us the proper policies yeah. so that businesses can plan and move. That is all I'm asking. Dele Oye, we'll have this conversation in the nearest future. Many thanks for coming. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.